In this video, I'm going to show you how to propagate an Asiatic lily by bulb scaling. So remember that um, Asiatic lilies are not tunicate bulbs, they are imbricate bulbs because they don't have a papery covering over their scales. And the way that I want to do this um, is I'm going to see if there's a difference between proximity and whether or not the scale will develop into a new plant. So I have my flat set up here so that this is the outside scales and this is the inside scales. And I will just go in rows like this and that's how I'll set up my flat. flat. Now, this isn't really uh, an experiment per se because we our sample size, even though we're gonna have a whole bunch of scales, our sample size is only one individual, right? Because this is only one plant. So uh, that means that our sample size is effectively one. We're going to look at the base of this here, and we're going to we're going to treat this the same way that we would like a celery, and we're going to try to find our outermost scale first. And it looks like to me that it's probably going to be this one here. So we're just going to kind of peel, and then we'll stick. Well, we could probably put a little rooting hormone on these if we wanted to, but I don't know that it's going to be necessary. Okay, so then. We're just going to peel and stick. And we're going to kind of just go around in a circle on here and continue doing that from inside to outside, or yeah, outside to inside. Looks like I have a couple of scales in here that are damaged. That might be okay. I'm not sure. Um, let's see. I think this one is probably our next scale. And then this one's on the outside. It's harder to tell which one is on the outside. This one is on the outside next. And then this one. And if all of these form new lilies, I mean, that would be awesome. That's how people propagate it for a mass scale production. And just like we saw with the bulb scoring, um, it may take several years for one of these chip scales to um, actually produce. A new flower sock. Okay, see this one is like super damaged. So this one I'm probably just going to throw away. It looks like we have a slug in here who's made itself a home. And this is probably mechanical damage. It could have been from somebody that was pulling weeds or whatever. You know, we just kind of stabbed it. And so um, those scales aren't going to be ones that we want to use. Oh, cool. Just gonna keep going here and see how many of these scales we can get off of here. Boy, if this turns into this many plants, that's gonna be awesome. These are so cool looking. They're really tall lily and they get these beautiful, this one is pink with uh, speckles on it. Oh, here's another, another big hole, we'll toss this one. And as we get closer to the center, the scales are a little bit smaller. Oh, look at that. I got two that time. I think that one was more on the inside. Okay, then let's go with this one here. And I think this one's next. And then we'll go with this one. A lot of these pieces that you see in here are roots from other plants that were growing around this bulb. This was from my cut flowers garden here at the, oh, that one didn't come off all the way. There must have been something. Didn't want that one to come off. All right, here's another. Easter lilies are propagated this way too. And Easter lilies, they propagate with specific light requirement conditions as well so that they can get them to flower um, at Easter. Otherwise, they would not be flowering at Easter. It's kind of like how you get poinsettias in the wintertime. All of those are tricked flowers that um, needed special light requirements to, to get them to flower at the appropriate time. All right. Oh, here's another damaged one, so we'll pull that off. That looks like that's on the outside next. They do, the scales do look like they're getting smaller towards the inside. That's to be expected. The ones on the furthest most part outside are um, the oldest. And the ones towards the inside are the youngest. 
just gonna keep peeling this off. Wow, boy oh boy, if this all turns into lily bulbs, I am gonna have like the most beautiful lily garden ever. Maybe not ever, there's a lot of really fantastic lily gardens out there. Okay, a couple more here. Now this will still flower for me as long as I keep this central one intact and so I'm probably just going to keep the center one um, as its own entity and just replant it outside so that it can grow and be beautiful again this year. But no sense in all of these going to waste, right? We can have all of these turn into beautiful flowers. It's funny, as I see this when I'm, I'm peeling up this way, this kind of reminds me of like a romaine lettuce. And I'm going to be teaching you guys how to propagate romaine lettuce uh, in a couple of weeks. All right, we're getting down there. Almost to the end. And I'm almost out of room in my flat, too, so that's perfect. Okay. Um, I've only got a couple more left around this main piece. Maybe I can squish them in here. Oh, yeah. We can squish them in there. There we go. And then look at that. We still have this massive basal plate intact for this plant that's going to that's going to grow and flower for us this season. All right, there we go. So this is what we're left with. This is what's going to get replanted outside. Oh, it looks like I have two more little scales on there. You know, I think I'm just going to let those grow on there. Um, and then we'll see what happens with this flat. I'm not really sure. Like I said, this is a sample size of one, so um, it's not really going to be statistically significant. But um, Easter lilies and Asiatic lilies are great high dollar items, so it's a really good thing for you guys to know how to propagate them. Uh, I'm going to put this on some bottom heat so that it stays pretty warm. Uh, it'll go next to your jade and aloe plants. And we'll just keep checking on it over the next couple of weeks. And we'll see if we get some roots by the end of the quarter. <laughs>